Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV at your service to explain exactly what is meant by the geometric mean of two numbers. Actually, we can also extend that to more than two numbers, but let's start with just the two numbers. Now, you've heard of the arithmetic mean also known as the average, where you simply add up the numbers and then divide by the number of numbers to get the average. Well, in the geometric mean, you multiply up all the numbers and then take the nth root of, the, of that product, depending on how many numbers there are. If they're n numbers, you take the nth root. So let's just Say you have numbers x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and so on, all the way up to x sub n, where n is some positive number, some positive whole number, like 769. But usually it's just going to be 2. Uh, in amateur radio applications, usually, n is just going to be equal to 2, so you're going to have a very easy time finding the geometric mean of two numbers. But let's do the general, more complicated method first. That's the way I always like to do things, is do the hard stuff first. <laughs> what you do to find the geometric mean of those numbers is you just multiply them all up, x1, x2, I'm not a very good uh, scribbler, am I? x2, x3. You simply multiply them all up together and get a huge product. Usually it'll be huge. Although if these numbers are between 0 and 1, it might be tiny. And then you take the nth root of that whole business. That'll give you the geometric mean. Now let's do the simple part. And that's where we get. That's where we'll most often find uh, the geometric mean in amateur radio applications will only in be involving two numbers. Let's just call them x and y. The geometric mean of x and y is simply the square root of their product. So, whereas with the arithmetic mean, where you add the numbers and then divide by the number of numbers. In the geometric mean, you multiply up all the numbers and then find the root of, uh, find the number of numbers, the root of that product. And with two numbers, it's usually just two. Now, I, I alluded to uh, an, a very good example of, uh, of that situation in my discussion about why 50 ohms or about 50 ohms for the impedance of a coaxial cable in ham radio applications. Why do they pick this value? And I performed a geometric mean between the feed point impedances of two very common antennas. The half wave dipole antenna, which is about 73 ohms at the feed point, and the quarter wave vertical over perfectly conducting ground, which is about 36.5 ohms at the feed point. And when you multiply 73 times 36.5, let's just make that a time sign so we don't get it confused with the decimal point, and then take the square root, what do we get? Well, let's invoke our calculator and find out. 73, meaning best regards, times 36.5 equals, the square root is 51.618, which comes out to roughly 52 ohms. And you'll often hear about 52 ohm coaxial cable or a ham radio wants a 50 or 52 ohm output. 
So this is one, just one example of where the geometric mean comes in handy in amateur radio applications. Another application where you're going to encounter this geometric mean is when you have what is known as a quarter wave matching section. That's a quarter wavelength transmission line. It can be coax, it can be ladder line, it can be twin lead. For that matter, it can even be lamp cord, if you're inclined to use that as a transmission line. They tested that once, you know. It came out to have a characteristic impedance of around 100 ohms, but it was kind of lossy. When, the length, when you take a section of transmission line, and you take into account the velocity factor, and you make it so that it's an electrical quarter of a wavelength, it has very specific properties. If you have a purely resistive impedance X here and a purely resistive impedance Y here, in order to get a match with this kind of a line, in order to match these two impedances, you need to have the line's characteristic impedance equal the geometric mean of the purely resistive impedances at the end of the line. I'll get into that more in uh, future videos when I talk about quarter wavelength transmission line sections. Very interesting uh, stuff. Very interesting properties those lines have. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73. And so long for now.